already covered, Fred Dibner has now reached the Lake District on his grand tour of Britain's industrial past. My eldest son Jack's come over from the Isle of Man, you know, give us a lift on this trip. And I'm, I'm really, where we're going on, I think we need all the help we can get. We've got Jimmy in the support vehicle behind us, you know, like we're stopping so frequently through lack of steam and, and small bills. The, the pair of flashing lights behind is a must on country lanes like this. The Lake District isn't really an area that most people associate with our industrial past and heavy industry. But once upon a time, round Wookington and Barrow in Furness, you know, there were great industrial centres and they mined iron ore by the hundreds of tons and it was some of the best iron ore in all of it, all of England, you know. And alas, it's all gone now, you know. A uh, bit sad, really. But while we're up here, we're calling on a mate of mine, Mr Richard Ransom, who is also a fellow traction engine owner and steam engine enthusiast, to do a few running repairs, cos it's uh, giving me trouble, you know. I'm a bit disappointed in it. The trouble is, in all the hurry to get the engine on the road, Fred didn't really have time to do all the fine tuning he would have liked. So he keeps coming across these little problems that need to be sorted out. It isn't steaming very well at all. I think the fact that piston rods, I think, I've put, it's my fault, you know, I've put the cylinder block a bit too far forward. And the, I know for a fact that the piston, the high pressure piston, covers the portholes up when, when it's in the forward position, mm. which means that, you know, when it's supposed to be working, the steam can't get at it properly, you know. So what I'm going to do is, when I get to Mr Ransom's, I'm going to beg him to use his workshop and shorten the piston rods by about a quarter of an inch. Are you going to get the dicks all right, then? Well, <laughs> there's another big hill yet. Fred knows some good steam engine men up here who he's going to be able to get some help and advice from. But he's got to get there first. Fred's engine is a four horsepower model built to pull around 15 tonnes. But right now, it's struggling to pull two. This is ridiculous, isn't it? Bottom gear jump. Mm -hmm. At least the scenery is good. It's time for a rethink. Fortunately, Fred's friend Dick Ransom has arrived and he's got a plan. Because we're a bit worried as to whether the engine would get the van up. So Dick's got one of his mates for come and rescue it, you know, pull it up with a Land Rover. Yeah. It's a bit of an insult to our engine. <laughs> Just a bit of insurance, Fred. Well, well uh, <laughs> when we get there, we're going to do some running repairs. Aren't Absolutely, we? yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah to make it well again. Any man who never did it never, so, never took the risk. There was a man, when, wasn't he? <laughs> when you think we had boiler in about five different pieces three times, you know, yeah. before we finally riveted yeah. it together. Yeah. They must have lost them at somewhere. Like. Yeah. Anyway, I think, you know, if we do what we say, I think yeah. it'll be alright. Oh, we'll give it a whirl. Yeah. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Well, you're right. <laughs> That's a bit easier without the living van in tow. So you just pull forward a bit, Jase, on your right now. Very hard to back up the four wheel wagon. Very well. Yeah. It's been such a disappointing journey <laughs> that 
We're going to have to in the morning when it's cooled down, you know, set the cylinder end covers off and uh, weigh up how much we can take off the end of the piston rod. And uh, hopefully he'll help me. I know he'll help me. I know he will do that because I've known him a long time. If something happened, we lost the nuts and they never got put back, you know, so I hope it's not. So, oh! <laughs> never mind losing your nuts. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ransom. That's all right, Mr. Dean. God. Yeah, God bless you. Have you got another crate full? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen one. Good health. Uh, good Why health. have you not got one? No, I don't. I, I'm, I'm a bitter man. Oh, all right. Uh, all right. I, I, I don't. I'm not a reached out fella. Well, I am. I've been yeah. statue. Mm. Good health. Good health, Red. Mm. Yeah. Not one. What, Cop? Moving it. All right, so I'll get out your way then. Whoa, whoa, that's full forward. Now, you, yeah. you can see the point there, can't you? Yeah, yeah. But is it enough, you know? Now, I don't think that's healthy looking, is it? No, uh, but you see what I mean? It's in that recess, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, but, yeah. But it's yeah. not healthy looking, no. It is, it's, it's too long, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think we've got to shorten, maybe leave this one. Well, That's just about covering it up, isn't it? Right, I yeah. reckon about a quarter of an inch easy. Yeah. It'll, it'll make it so the, the steam comes in a lot better than it is doing. Just hold it there, Jack. Just back a bit. Whoa. Yeah, go on, Jack. You know, we've got well, Roger coming, who's, a, who's quite a leading authority oh, on, yeah. on steam engines. He actually makes steam engines for rich people's steam yachts, you know, for Lake Windermere and everywhere else. Turn it back again, Jack. Morning. Way money. Yeah? <laughs> what you found there? We, we've uh, got a problem. You've got a nest in there, have you? Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Can you lift Nick. me up then? <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you think the what? whole cross head, the whole it, piston rod, the whole lot? Yeah, yeah it's too way. far look, forward. Look. There is a slight uh, clearance. Yeah, so. yeah but um, well, of course, you yeah, know, yeah, might yeah. bugger all, you yeah, know, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it would, yeah. it works it. Yeah. In, if you put it in, if we're 200 on the clock yeah. and you open the regulator, it's even reluctant to start without the double eye. Yeah, well, well, what do you think, Roger? You know, generally, it's it's not not in bad uh, condition. Mm. I'm a bit um, worried about the way the piston is covering the parts yeah. opening mm. in mm. the cylinder, mm. so that when the valve opens, the, there is no room for the yeah, steam, steam to get through. Yeah. So what I propose doing is lending you a high-speed burr yeah. and machining a lot of the iron out of mm. the cylinder round the parts. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go down to my boat. And yeah. uh, if uh, later in the day you mm. fancy coming out for a run, yeah, then, no, uh, yeah, I love that. Get me away from this thing. Away and have a, yeah. Get something that works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's then. nice to see you. Yeah. Anyway. See, you see you later, Roger. Yeah. Bye. Ta-ra. Good afternoon, Roger. Oh, <laughs> Have you got have you got steam up? Oh yeah, yeah, blowing off. Yeah. We're ready for our trip round the lake. All right. Well, the Shamrock, she was built in 1906 by Shepherds of Bonus. Yeah. Wealthy families, such as I think I'm right in saying that. The families like Beatrix Potter's family used to come and take mm. the, the castle for the summer mm. season uh, and the boat would be mm. part of the hiring. And then eventually Second World War came along and the numbers of people that could afford to do this sort of thing had gone and uh, immediately after the war it had its lovely steam plant removed, it had a, a, a TVO engine fitted mm. And then about 10 years later, it went one step worse and had a diesel engine fitted. Mm -hmm. And all this lovely boiler casing and everything was removed. Mm -hmm. the, the whole boat lost its dignity. Yeah. And uh, until 1976, uh, 
it was just lying derelict because mm. nobody wanted to go out mm. in an old-fashioned boat like mm. this. You yeah. know, the awful <laughs> 60s and 70s. And, yeah, you know, yeah. Old was yeah. not wanted. Yeah, wanted a white and plastic. So one. it just laid around empty, no engine, no anything. It was just mm. a, a hull. Yes. Yeah. Roger obtained it, mm. and uh, it took three years almost to get the, uh, mm. the boat back into mm. its original concept. Mm. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? This? Yeah. yeah. And it is the way to go, isn't it? It is. I mean, mm. The modern diesel yeah, is very are. good, but it's not like this. Is it? yeah. I mean, there's really no sound mm. at all, is there? There's no feel, there's no motion, no, there's no, no, no. nothing. I believe you've finally mended my gramophone. Oh, I did, but it isn't a gramophone, it's a phonograph. Phonograph. Mm. It's a 1905 Edison Gem Mark B phonograph. And it's clockwise, a clock, of course, and it's got a lovely aluminium horn. This is new, that's new. The cylinder is made of wax, it's also 1905. It's an Edison Bell cylinder. They were made in this country. Mm -hmm. Most cylinders you can get hold of are American. Mm. But this is English, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if it'll go. That's not up to speed, but we'll soon see. <laughs> you like it? No, it's wonderful, yeah. <laughs> Them lads who recorded that will not be around, no. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> It'd be hard to be smelly, won't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> there we are. Now back to work on the engine. Will the engine doctor be able to cure the problem? Well, Roger's got his handheld milling cutter and we're going to put a chamfer on the uh, port so that when the piston is, you know, in its full forward position, steam can come past the end of it, you know. It, 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 we think it's a different piston that's too thick and it's covering the port up, you know, when it comes forward. Maybe doing the same going backwards, you know. Now for the big test. Is the engine going to work any better? We're now off to Egremont and the last deep iron ore mine in Europe that still works. And when we get there, we should find out whether our running repair is a success. The work of the engine doctor seems to have done the trick. Iron ore production in Cumbria reached its peak in the 1880s and there were over 300 iron ore shafts. Back then the industry employed over 5,000 people in Cumbria. We've made it! Today, there's just three and they're at Florence. Gilbert's here, see? Ah. You come up the hill with the brakes on again. Well, Fred, we've been waiting a couple of hours for yeah, you. Yeah, well, we... As soon as you got here, <laughs> we're ready to go down it, the pit. It, it's a long way from... <laughs> from uh, where we come from. I've forgotten this thing that long. I've only been down the last couple of days. Yeah, but with this god here, that's the main thing. He don't like hills, this thing, you know. Doesn't they? All right. He doesn't like hills, there's plenty of them. Well, I hope you like hills, because yeah. we've got a cap lamp and a helmet yeah, in here. Yeah, I know, a big hill down on the ground, yeah. <laughs>
Have you got your, your incline railway going yet? Yes. The mine is still a commercial operation, and the ore they mine here is used to make pigments for the dye that goes into paints. Get your heads and your backs down, lads. <laughs> you know, we were a great big mining industry around here. Yeah, yeah. I, we had about between two and three hundred iron ore mines. How many men? And, well, there be, in this pit alone, at the start of the Second World War, there'll be a thousand men. Yeah. This one thing. Right. In fact, we've got we've got eleven shafts here. Yeah. yeah. And this is uh, the site of number three uh, old court shaft. Yeah. This one was sunk in 1905. Yeah, yeah. yeah when you would when you would sink in this drift down, no, or, or you know, an edding like this, how much powder would you use for, you know, advance? Or... Well, you went for a five foot va advance yeah. every shift, and you would yeah. use 20 to 30 pounds of explosive, mm. a fairly yeah. high explosive, oh, yeah. and of course detonators. Oh. Um, the men worked in companies, mm. which would either be twos or threes, mm -hmm. and. Their daily routine would be for the blast at the end of the shift, mm. really for to get the fumes clear. Mm. Uh, we favoured spraying it into the air a mixture of compressed air, water and castor oil of all things. Mm. Yeah. It's a great media for to kill Side dust. Of dust. Yeah. Mm. The castor oil, eh? Mm. Keep you regular, that, won't it? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Have you still got that exotic order here, see? <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at them. Yeah. Oh, they're in fine uh, yeah. growth there, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether we can harvest Have them. Have you tried any in the pan? <laughs> and of course, this is where we come to the ore. Yeah. Mm. Remember as well, of course, that there were the, those two to three hundred mines, perhaps all owned by different companies, and all selling to different ironworks. Uh, and they were vying with each other for quality and price. Mm. It, it, it was a very uh, competitive area to be in and a competitive industry to be in. And this isn't a little steam engine down here. Machinery like this in the mine is powered by compressed air. Right, well, in here we've got our Atlas Copco loader. Yeah. It's powered by compressed air. Well, it's you. <laughs> it does indeed. Yeah. It has a bucket on the front yeah. and it loads into its own body. Yeah. And when it's full, we travel it back to the top of the ore pass mm -hmm. and we can tilt the body up. Mm -hmm. The rear door opens and we tilt it so that the load drops into the ore pass. Mm. Marvellous machine, isn't it? Yeah. Is that? How old is it? That's a good question. We mm. first got them at Hale Moor in 66, I would say. Mm. So it would be yeah, brand new vintage. in about 1966. <laughs> <laughs> vintage vehicle. Yeah. All our ore went to be made into pig iron and then steel. Yeah. Some at Workington and... Yeah. Some down at Miller, yeah, which was a one industry town. Fred, come and have a look at this in the roof here. It's as good as an example of kidney yeah. ore you'll see anywhere in the world. Yeah. Tremendous ore. Yeah. Magnificent. All round here. 80% iron. Yeah. Almost good enough for to make hematite jewellery out of. Yeah. But it's a little bit like onion skins. Yeah. See it's the it's thin it. layers? We need yeah. thick layers for to make good jewellery. Yeah. We don't get much what? of it nowadays. What? You know, how, how is it formed that sort of stuff? Well, I don't think we've yeah. solved how yeah, it has no, been formed. Knows, no, it? I don't think so. It yeah, just appears right. randomly yeah. in the body of the ore. Yeah. Yeah, there's tons of it around here, isn't there? Well, there is, Fred, but yeah. we've got to leave it for there for the time being, I think. Yeah. Right. Is it back to the surface? Have you got plenty of photographs, Derek? Finishes, spreads top off. He likes his brass and copper polished up nicely. And then later on, we're going to get steam up and shoot off to Workington Steelworks, where all the iron ore from Florence went to. It was running better, 
I mean, it's a lot of good trial today when we steam off to Wickington. I have a bit more to do yet before he comes because uh, <laughs> he likes to see it gleaming. Just wipe the paintwork over and then uh, we're ready for off and getting it all dirty again. Ready for polishing tomorrow. <laughs> It's running very well, actually. On that reasonable level roads, it's all right, just when you come to a big steeper. And it's like motor cars, you've got to change gear. Nice to see you here. <laughs> We're now injecting. That means we're putting water in the boiler. Um, when it's uh, gone up about an inch, we'll set off. I'm ready for a pint of my tea. Well, are, you, are you stopping at Ram tonight? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, right. So, yeah. We're, so we're both stopping at Ram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, that bloody leaving it on its own. Next morning, it's off to the steelworks to see where the raw material that was mined at Florence was turned into a product. All the ore mined at the Florence mine came here to the Workington Steelworks where it was converted by Bessemer converters into steel to manufacture railway lines. 95% of the UK's railway line were rolled here at Workington. And I don't think there's a railway in all the world that's not got Wookington steel stamped on the side of its track. Yeah, look, so, well, Today, most of it is rolled in this modern computer-controlled rolling mill. But what Fred was interested in seeing was the old hand-rolling mill, which is still used for small, light and narrow-gauge railways. So this is the last uh, very small rolling mill in the it is uh, very, very old. So this was driven by a steam engine, yeah. and this was taken out uh, some years ago. Yeah. So. But it still works, and we still oh, get a, a good saleable yeah. product oh, yeah. from this mill. Well, with the steam engine, is that right? Yeah, in the drive. Yeah. Very similar to what I remember when I was a bit younger in Bolton. Uh, and all, and, uh, was that all manual operation? Yeah, all, 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 yeah, but they used to let me have a go, but it was bloody harder than it was. Right. <laughs> I right. suggest that we go around to the right. front yeah. of the process right. and then yeah. we'll uh, yeah. have a look at the start. Right. <laughs> Comes out of this door down there, this uh, chute. How long do these lads do it before they get a break? Uh, well, it's the about... <laughs> He's off now, he says. <laughs> but, uh, so they'll have like an hour on, then half an hour off, rotate around to an easier job to try and uh, make sure that they're not all on the same job all the time. It's in your bloody short, Mary. They have couches in this rolling mill they were at. <laughs> you were that nice. You're very odd and never have been sleep by now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's coming towards the end of this fight. This is the future in the centre. This is the 113 pound rail that we do for network rail. Uh, this is the future uh, of making sure that uh, we have good, consistent uh, rail manufacturing. Good for Great Britain. <laughs> That's right, look. Great Britain. Too. All right. That's a great snake, isn't it? Hey? Yeah. On a pub across road, there were about four bloody pubs. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> There's one left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you can't only do it now. No, he wants to drink a cold water. Oh, right. In 1962, the steel industry employed around 5,000 people in Wilmington. Now there are just 200 employees. Most of the old ways of working have gone forever. But down at a local pub, 
Fred met some of the former workers to find out what it used to be like. That two mill that you saw, where they're doing it by hand, Yeah. we always referred it as number two mill. Mm. We had a rolling mill in Bolton up until about 20 years ago. Right. And it were, it was steam driven with a vertical steam engine. Your men had a rougher time, still today. They had bloody couches and easy chairs. And when they'd done so many passes, they all like, flopped into them. And they had a propeller off an aeroplane, written yeah. with a belt, going round and round, keeping them cool. Now, we had the Solway Colliery, and it closed. And we lads, we worked in the Bessemer, in the steel-making plant. And these colliers got a start in the, in the Bessemer shop. And uh, do you know how long they lasted? One day. And the reason was, it's too dangerous here. <laughs> Oh. And, often, and I thought, these are miners who are yeah, working, yeah, yeah. what, three mile under the sea? Well, it's all them sparks. Yeah. <laughs> it was, Fred, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's quite frightening, really, isn't it, if you watch it. You know, if you realise what could happen to you, you know, if it, if it went wrong. Oh, like you would be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was one of a group who was injured in 1962 when, uh, when this ladle of iron fell. This shackle had been used, which wasn't really supposed to be used. Mm. It was a bit like the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. It was only a small emergency ladle with four mm. tun in, but of course, came down. And oddly enough, I was in charge of the job at the time, and uh, I got knocked down in the rush. And you, you sort of automatically <laughs> put your hands out to save yourself. Mm. Yeah. And even though I was a, an under-manager, if you like, I'd never been frightened to use a shovel and had fairly horny hands. Mm. And I remember the skin started peeling off like blotting paper. Mm. And I'd only had my first car about three weeks before. And I thought, yeah, oh Christ, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to drive the bloody car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it hurts, doesn't it? You know. One of the first jobs, the boys, when they came in the basement at 14 or 15, was taking the sample from the pitch side. Oh, yeah. To the laboratory for, yeah, for to, to chemical analysis, analysis you see. and yeah. what they used to do was that they, they had a bent bit of wire, yeah, uh, maybe it's about a quarter of an inch yeah. diameter, yeah, and 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 they used to carry it in yeah. that. You say, yeah. well, this little chap George Dickinson, you remember George, and he wanted a, a Jimmy Riddle, you say, yeah. So he's standing in behind uh, tin sheets at pit side, and he has this bloody thing in his hand. And he happened to catch it, you see, and of course he burned it. So he went over to the, went over to the ambulance station and he said, oh, he said, I've burnt my pencil. <laughs> <laughs> so they bandaged it up, but they didn't leave him a wall at the, at the end. Bloody <laughs> hell. Yeah, who's going to tell him? We've run out. Well, I'll it's go. been a warm and dusty day with the steam machinery, isn't it? Well, you drive, but you don't drive, do you? Well, you are. Why? I drive. Yeah, well, these two don't like it. They can only steer it. I have to keep off the house. Keep it off the house. Keep it in the dark. Who's going to hold up the bloody polish in you? Oh, well, that's your job. Now there's a long drive ahead as Fred and Alf head through the Scottish borders on their way from West Cumbria to Bowness on the Firth of Forth. They'll be visiting an iron foundry to find out more about the casting process and the foundryman's trade. And while they're in Scotland, Fred will be driving his engine over the Forth Road Bridge. <laughs> 